Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today uh, I've switched things around. I've flipped into the Sonic Talk position because I'm reviewing some software here and it's just a bit easier to sit down. Um, so what I'm looking at today is the Steinberg Backbone. It's a resynthesis. It's it's actually called a drum plugin. Uh, so that's what it's designed for. But I actually find it's uh, a lot more than just that. But essentially what we have are eight layers, potential layers, so I've got a couple in here just for illustration. So you have up to eight layers and each layer can have a sample in it and that sample can be fiddled about with in a number of ways. So we can drop uh, a sample in here so we can see our sample. We can also uh, resynthesize it and this is really interesting because the resynthesis aspect of it is I think it's quite closely associated to the PadShop, PadShop Pro. I think that's what it's called that, that you get in the full version of Cubase, the, the latest version of Cubase, which I'm not a Cubase user, so I have to excuse me. I'm using this in live here. Uh, I'm using it the VST3 version. There is an AU version as well. But Resynthesis gives us an awful lot of extra features and functions that are really interesting. Uh, and that's where the, the strength of this lies, as far as I could tell. There's also a pitch engine, an envelope, which allows us to apply, which is great because we can have snappy envelopes for sort of drums, specifically for drums. A filter. And the filter has an enormous number of potentials. If I just, uh, I should be able to zoom in here because th what this is my one criticism. These Some of these are really tiny for my little eyes. Um, but we've got low pass, multiples, band pass, high pass, band reject, as well as having all these kind of drive. And that's actually, it's a really nice filter. The filter actually is very powerful and can do a lot of really cool stuff. Then finally, we've got an amplitude engine, which is uh, ADSR and has a variety of other, you know, drawable with, with editable curves. So we can create exponential linear curves like this. Uh, then finally, at the bottom here, if I take my face out of the way, you can see we've got an effects engine. Now, the effects engine allows us to, uh, if I just I just zoom this in, we can route this in serial, parallel, various different ways. We can have up to four slots per effects engine, and there's a whole bunch of effects in here, and they're really good quality effects. Equalizer, graphic EQ, uh, compressor, limiter, really nice effects, compressor, distort and bisque. Um, you know, the usual suspects pan and a really nice reverb, which we'll get onto in a little bit. Each of these eight layers here is just stackable. There's no kind of this one triggers on note, whatever, this one triggers on another. There's no velocity switching. So it's very much about creating layers of sounds and sort of sculpting. That's why they're sort of trying to push it as drums. But what I find is because you can have it play across the entire keyboard, you can put a load of samples in there and create these amazing sounds. So if we just go to the keyboard here, and I'll play this sound, which is a really simple sound. Uh, we'll come back, let's just have a look at that in detail. Uh, essentially, this is the wave. It's a part of uh, a mix that I've got in there. So if I, you might recognize one of my tracks. So. So I'm just using a single one of those little bass blips. So now if we come back to the main window, I'll just get rid of my head and I'll play that sound. And adjust the position and the purity and the formant scale and the speed, obviously it's a very short thing, so I'm slowing it right down and sort of picking out. Assigning those parameters is really easy. I just basically learn CC and that was it. And I've got them mapped to both layers, but we're only listening to one layer here. And that's, that's without any reverb on it. So, you know, it, because I've got assigned eight voices to this layer, it's got this kind of complexity. So just moving those things around, let's put the reverb on. If I switch the effects on, uh, there's a global switch for that. Uh, we've got the full parameter. This is a chorus review. I said the reverb was nice, but so now check this. Double check, we're going into the actual. Not even going into the reverb. Let's bring the reverb into play. Make sure it's moved over to uh, effects two engine a bit 
bit of chorus depth. Come back out. about you but that's really impressive i mean that sounds so harmonically rich i mean there was a lot of that without reverb adding the reverb you know that's just one of the great effects in here and for me this is where backbone even though it's designed for drums it's actually really powerful as just a synthesizer. I mean, I remember we're talking a tiny little sample. I popped in there, uh, messed around with this resynthesis engine. I'm not even playing all that much. I mean, there's so many more things that we could do. We, we can add sort of additional filters and uh, we can adjust the harmonic quality, the, the, the atonality. Which greatly affects character of the sound as well i mean there's a ton of stuff that we can do that's before we really get into any of the other stuff um you know so all i'm saying is don't just say oh it's only for drums because it really really isn't in my opinion okay so let's have a look at some drums i've got this loop here in loop cloud which i'm just going to drag into an instance of uh, backbone here I'll just set the sustain so that it's just for, for note on. So now I've just got it triggering on a note here. All well and good. So let's take a look at the decomposer. Decomposer is a sort of different, well, it's quite an interesting thing. And it's this section up here. If I just zoom in, we can have a good look at it. And what this allows us to do is kind of deconstruct. So if I just go to pre-listen, it says analyzing the loop. And now I can solo the noise section. I mean, this is very useful for for drum hits and that sort of thing, obviously, because you could take maybe a kick which has a hi-hat sample on it and just sort of take that stuff out and, and blend or, or, you know, anyway. So, so let's just so. So I could set using the cutoff and duration sensitivity what's going to happen here. So that's the noise portion and this is the tonal portion. So come out of pre-listen, hit apply. And now what it's going to do is create another layer here. So if we come back to my uh, regular shot, it's probably a bit easier. Uh, we can see that we've got the two layers. So now when I play, I can mess around with the, the amplitude of those individual parts. But there's a lot more I can do besides because let's just say I wanted to mess this up a bit. So I quite like the idea of maybe using a bandpass filter on here. And I think it's kind of interesting. We can create these interesting shapes and then I'll maybe... So we can f affect the tonality, but on top of that, we can also root, because I don't know if you can see, actually I'll take my head out of the way. We can see that we've got these two effect buses here, and currently um, I'm just going direct out of both of these modules. So if I now switch them both on, we can see that they're both going to the green compressor, which has set to an extremely extreme setting. So I can... Uh, I could, well, the blue compressor is much less so. So we can root and affect even more, almost this sort of like, like this kind of parallel processing. It's almost like a parallel compression, but we've got all this ability to additionally sculpt those sounds. And I've just got two effects in here. I mean, there's up to four slots, so we can have it however we want. And that's a really powerful thing. I can really mess around with the sound. And wouldn't it be nice if we could modulate that uh, that filter like I'm doing with the mouse, well, which you can't do. I mean, this is, again, you know, you've got no LFOs in there. And I think that was a mistake. I think they should have put LFOs. And I, I understand why they've done this, because I think they don't want to tread too much on maybe some of their other software. But coming at it from a sort of, hey, this looks cool for processing drums, I would still like to see an LFO in there somewhere to assign to a parameter. I mean, I can do it. 
I just have to, uh, like I've done here, I think, if I go to, uh, this is one of the other samples that I'm using from my, uh, from my mix. Uh, I think this is actually uh, this, which is the beginning of one of my tracks. So if I just come to Backbone again, I've just got this little Max, uh, Max for, for Live LFO, which I'm rooting to, uh, I can show you what it's modulating. It's just modulating, yeah pitch and purity just all little amounts you can see them wiggling around and it creates this sense of movement if i switch that off i can create maybe i'll do i'll amplify it a little bit more And it creates this lovely sense of movement, which I think would be great to have just overall. Well, it'd be a shame that, you know, it's just an LFO. It can't be that hard to do. Um, but that's their choice. And I think that's one of the criticisms I have. It sort of feels like it's so powerful as a synthesizer that it would be nice to be able to have a little bit more synthesizer functions. And by the same token, I also feel like it would be nice to have more sort of drum style functions, which is what I was saying about having being able to have layers, because here, obviously, if we could trigger each of these layers on a note, it would make much more sense, you know, because I could build a kit in here and have it rooted for effect. You know, there's a lot of potential there for rooting and mangling of the sound, but I can't do that. And that's a kind of shame. I have done it here. So what I've got is uh, if I come to my uh, drum rack where I've got a kick and a snare, I should. And these are all instances of, uh, of uh, backbone, because what I can do is I could just take an instance of backbone, drag it onto one of these pads, and then it will basically fire up an entire instance of backbone just for that sound, which does feel a bit overkill when you consider that, you know, it could be done another way. That's all I'm saying. So in this instance, I've got this little pattern going, which is just literally, which is just this. Very simple, but uh, say for instance, if I take the snare, we can have a look at this, uh, sorry, the kick. We can look at the kick. I've got I've got this kind of dual layer where I've uh, uh, decomposed the sound and I've affected them differently. So you could create the kick how I want there. And then in the hi-hat, I've also got um, some more. I've got effect in here little bit of reverb let's turn the effects off actually i've got the master effects so i can turn it off that but i've got some random um pitch going on on uh, on the hi-hat so it's just a little bit more random not just a straight sound so then i can play this pattern and i'm using the internal effects here and i've also got a snare so you know I could do all of that stuff, and that's great. Um, in this sound, uh, which is, I've got a saw bath. I've just got, let me just show you what's going on here. I've just got two different effects paths. Actually, if I take my head out of the way, that'll probably help. Uh, and if I play it, one side is distortion and flanger, one side is reverb, which is what we're listening to. So I'll just come back here. I'm using a uh, tube drive and the filter, but I can blend between them. But this sound, if I take the uh, resynthesis off and take the filter off, this is just... And take the effects off, this is just... A sawtooth, and what I've done is I've just... It's, a, it's actually a loop of sawtooth, but I've used the resynthesis. affect the sound quite massively just by adjusting the resynthesis parameters there and create a perfectly you know acceptable sort of acid synth line i mean yeah it's a bit of a cliche but hey you can't come up with the, the goods every time <laughs> um so there's a number of ways in which you can use it but like i say i think the, the thing that i really find the most satisfying is this synthesis method where i can create sounds 
using little snippets of audio that I'm just dragging in. Maybe this is a good time to take a look at the resynthesis engine a bit closer. So this is the resynthesis engine. I've turned all the effects off. Open the filter out. So in this instance, we can we can change we can change the amount of harmonic richness. We've also got the ability to do this filtering. If I put the if I take the filter off this, you'll be able to hear. Then we can have acceleration. So the playhead put, can move around in the uh, in the waveform, and we can take it back to the the beginning. And remember, this is the sound to begin with. That's what we're playing with, with the resynthesis engine on changing the form and filters. And we can also, I mean, this is quite powerful, this part here, if I zoom in a bit. And you can see we can add these nodes into the filtering. So we can sort of filter out some quite powerful, we can sculpt these really powerful kind of harmonic and, and, and frequency profiles. I mean, I don't know what this is gonna sound like. Sounds very interesting as it happens. And I'm using the resynthesis engine I'm playing, so if I speed this up a bit. Loop it on. Now, there's one thing I haven't shown yet, and that is um, the types of resynthesis. So this little button here, which goes between a sign and a noise, it kind of extracts the, it seems to extract the spectral noise here. So. so you're sort of hearing the inferred pitch, but it's done in sort of FFT noise mode. If I take these uh, filters, switch the filter off maybe. Really interesting. I mean, the, the possibilities are absolutely endless. And that's why I was kind of getting quite excited with it as a synthesizer, because, you know, using those as oscillator sources, you're kind of getting some really mad business going on. And it's very easy to get into this sort of other world. In fact, there's some great demos online. Uh, in fact, here we are on the Steinberg homepage, uh, where it's, you know, the Backbone homepage, drum resynthesizer, which again, it says, and I think they're selling it a little bit short. There's a great demo by uh, um, Robert it's kind Dudzik, of spooky. where he's using it in a much more sort of cinematic and filmic way, and it sounds, it really does sound good, and it creates these very otherworldly things, some lovely things you can do with symbols and modulating those, because again, there's a lot of tonal uh, variance inside the symbol noises and layering those up with sounds. So I've concentrated quite a lot on the synthesis functions and perhaps processing a loop, but there are, you know, this is, let's not forget, this is designed for really, uh, certainly in the minds of Steinberg, for processing drum hits and creating unique and unusual sounds from those. So I'm just going to uh, grab something from Loop Masters. Let's take this uh, snare and just drop that in here. So what does that sound like? No, pretty standard snare this is one of the free ones from loop cloud um so let's just listen to this in terms of the context of the uh decompose so i'm just going to do that i'm going to take that noise take the default settings i'm going to apply this so i've got the same sound but i've got two separate things so let's just let's mess with this guy a bit that's very low. That's quite interesting, actually. And then maybe we could uh, mess around with the on the band pass. It's almost like a, a kick. Let's try resynthesizing that. Slow it down. Uh, 
I mean, could be getting into a percussive sound there. It's sort of because it's sort of pitched. And that was from a really fairly standard snare. Let's try that again. I'll just delete these layers, turn the effects off. Let's go and grab, uh, let's have that symbol and just drop this in. So now we've got a sort of delayed signal sound, uh, symbol sound. So let's, let's resynthesize this because there's a lot of. That's quite interesting. What happens if we put a pitch envelope on it? Oh yeah, I'm liking the sound of this. Let's take that off. Let's add uh, some of that lovely uh, reverb on it. Slow it down a bit. Wow, now that's not where we started, is it? That's amazing. So let's just go back. I've got a pitch envelope, we've got the resynthesis. Could be a kind of riser. I guess we could put it in the opposite direction. What would that be? Could be a riser effect or something. Or some space craft jetson -y type thing. I mean, there's a lot of potential there, actually, in terms of drum hits. And these, this is me really just picking two sounds at random and doing some basic applications. So Steinberg's kind of preposition that this is actually for drum synthesis. Yes, absolutely, it will do that. Um, but I think it does so much more. So Backbone comes with around about a gig or so of uh, patches and it installs it via the, I uh, thoroughly recommend you use the the download manager and, and library installer and you categorize it you can favor it you can do all of that kind of stuff so all the usual suspects again very tiny text i don't know whether the people who work at steinberg are just kind of like eagles or something but they make everything very small and that would be one criticism i have of the unit um you know when you look at things like the uh, loop editor the waveform editor which is actually very useful because we've got a lot of features here just you know if we look at the size of my cursor and the size of those icons, I mean, they are teeny, teeny, tiny. They really are very, very small. And that's sometimes uh, a little bit challenging, particularly, you know, in the d day and age of 4K screens where, you know, you might want to zoom. You can, can we resize? Let's just see. We can resize this to a degree. Yeah, it's resizable, but it doesn't really make the text any bigger. <laughs> so it's not all that useful. Um, so in my mind, Backbone is a great sounding instrument on its own. It feels like it falls between two posts, though. It feels like it should have slightly more features to be really useful as a drum synthesis kit building type of thing. It feels like in some ways an audio editor as well, because you can decompose the sounds and create multiple layers. But also, it's really good as a synthesizer, and it feels like the synthesis functions, you know, just just an LFO would probably make all the difference, you know, and then you could really get into it. So it just feels like it's it needs a bit of tweaking, in my opinion, to be perfect for either application. But having said that, it's really viable, um, just sort of decom the decomposer for for kind of taking sounds apart and re putting and putting them back together. Just absolutely brilliant. And the sound of it is really good. And those effects are very impressive. I mean, they really, you know, they really do give you a lot to play with. And it's no surprise, really, because, you know, Steinberg, I've been making software, God, I mean, it must be 20, 30 years. You know, they should be pretty good at it by now. And they certainly are. Background is available now. You can buy it. If I scroll down here, we'll see what the price is. Uh, I believe it's £128, including VAT. And it's available for uh, well, 1.5 gigabyte. There is also a trial version download um, for Mac and Windows. Uh, the specification, the system requirements, you do need Windows 10, 64-bit and up, or Windows 8.1, Mojave or Catalina. So you can't go back any further VST3 AAX for Windows, VST3 AU and AAX for uh, Mac, and a display minimum resolution of 1080 by uh, 1920 by 1080. That's pretty much it. I mean, I once again, I will say it's a great sounding instrument. It just feels like a couple of tweaks would make it absolutely spot on for uh, lots of sonic exploration.
That's it for this time. See you next time. Thanks for watching.